Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the destination net with the JWeb Wizard Learning Byte. Okay, here is the example. And here in the example, we have VSRX1 and Server1 connects to VSRX1 on Gigi001. And with Gigi000, VSRX1 connects to the internet. And VSRX1 uses that 10.10.1.2 IP address for that. And then we have the user that also connects to the internet using the 192.168.1.2 IP address. And what we need to do is we need to configure destination net on VSRX1 using the JWeb destination net wizard to ensure that the user can communicate with the server. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and get this started. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. So we are currently in configure mode and we need to go to security services, then NAT, then destination, and then we need to click the launch wizard button. And here we see the NAT type that we need to select. And we can see here that we currently have destination NAT selected. There's nothing configured for destination NAT. We do have one source NAT rule configured. We can see that here. And the graphic on the bottom of the wizard shows a representation of the NAT type. We can see here that we have hosts on a public network, such as the internet, that need to connect into some sort of resource, like a server, on our private network. So let's go ahead and click the Start button. And here we can see that we have no destination net rules configured. So let's go ahead and configure one by pressing the plus button. And to begin, let's name the rule. Call this DST NAT LB for learning bike. And then we need to specify the from criteria. We can select zone or interface. We'll just select zone here. We need to select the untrust zone. And then we need to specify the IP address. So this will be the IP address of the external facing interface for VSRX1. And then we can specify the destination port. We don't need to do that. Actually, we do. I want to specify a destination port here. We'll say 22. Say where we need SSH access to a server. We can specify if it was a web server, it'd probably be something like uh, 80 or 443 or maybe 8080. So keep that in mind. This is important that we specify which port we need to allow. Now, if you want to... Uh, you could leave that open for all ports if necessary, although it wouldn't be recommended from a security standpoint. Okay, so rule action. We're going to have one option here. We're going to have, well, I guess two options, address range and none. And we're going to select address range, which is basically going to allow us to configure a pull. Click the edit button. And then here we specify the address range. Now, we just have one address that we're netting to, and that's that server. So we're going to have 10.1.1.100. And we specify the port if it's different. So we could come in like on a high port number, like say 22,000 or, or whatever, and then translate it to port 22. But since we're coming in on port 22 and we're going to port 22, there's no need to add in anything here because it'll keep the original port if we don't specify anything here. So let's click Done. Then we'll click Next. And here it gives us a summary of what we configured. And so let's click Commit. And it's committed, it says it's successful. Do we want to exit? We're gonna say yes. And we can select Destination Net again to see our new rule and rule set. Everything looks good there. So let's go ahead and test this. Okay, so here is the client device. And so what we're going to do is we are going to open an SSH session to that 10.10.1.2 IP address, and that will be natted to the 10.1.1.100 address. So let's try that now, SSH 10.10.1.2, and it asks us for the password. And we can see here, this is the actual server. This isn't the VSRX1 device. So we're actually in, this worked. So what we can do now is just let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface. Then let's go to monitor. Then let's go to NAT. Let's go to destination NAT. And we can see here we have the rule set with the rule information that is configured. We have the name, the rule set name, 
the from zone, the destination address range, increase the size here, we can see that better. It's just going 10.10.1.2 .10 to 10.10.1.2. .10 so there's only one address there. Action of destination NAT LB. And that's the actual pool that is being used there. That's why it says that. I think if we go to pool, we'll see that. Yeah, see the pool name is DST NAT LB. So that might have seemed a little confusing there with the wizard, how it named that. But just keep in mind, that's how it named it. Named it the same as the rule, uh, rule set and the rule name. And so then under sessions, we have successful, failed, and current. Then we have translation hit. And we see we have one successful, one current, zero failed, and one translation hit. And then in the graph at the bottom, we can see that, and you know, we can hover over this, we can see that we have for the top 10, we just have one session, and it's using the DST NAT LB destination NAT rule. And again, we can click on pools. We see more information here. We have an interactive graph that shows uh, which pool is being hit, you know, the top 10, there's only one. So of course it's going to be in the top 10. We can see information about the, the name, the address range, the total addresses and translation hits. So we can see that everything looks good here. We know it's working. One last thing I do want to look at here is I do want to look at the flow session. We can type in SSH for the application. And we can see here that this is our one session. It shows the source IP address, the destination IP, uh, the protocol in use as TCP uh, incoming interface is Giggy 000, outgoing interface is Giggy 001. And so that's all expected. Now, the one thing that is missing here is it doesn't show what the IP address is being translated to. Now, we can extrapolate that information from looking at the pool. We can see what's being hit there. And so that information is there. But I do like to look at the session table in the CLI because that gives us a little more information on what we can see. And so let's jump to the CLI for VSRX1. Okay, so here is VSRX1. Specify the source prefix of the client. And we can see the one session here. We see that the client, which is 192.168.1.2, is going towards 10.10.1.2. That's the external IP address or the IP address that is associated with the external interface on VSRX1. And then we can see here that 10.1.1.100, that's the server IP address, is responding to 192.168.1.2, which is the client address that is out on the public internet. So we can see from that, the destination IP address is being translated to 10.1.1.100. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure destination NAT using JWeb Destination NAT Wizard. And we demonstrated how to verify destination NAT using JWeb. And we looked at this session table on the CLI a little bit too. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.